Hi, my name's Nick Raines from Leica Academy Australia. In this video I'd like to talk to you about the M to L adapter which allows you to put M series lenses on the Leica SL2 or SL2S and I'll tell you why that's a really good idea. So why is this a useful accessory to have if you've got an SL2 or an SL2S? Well, if you've got M lenses already, a lot of people who have SLs and SL2s and SL2Ss actually already own M lenses, but even if you don't, it allows you to put mechanical M lenses and vintage M lenses onto a state-of-the-art camera. So you can have uh, your autofocus with the SL lenses, but you can also go in a different direction and use manual focus and modern M lenses or vintage M lenses just to expand your repertoire of, of looks, if you like. I mean, there's a lot to be said for some of the really, really old 1950s, 1960s M lenses with different coatings. They have a certain certain look about them, a certain way that the light is drawn and a certain way that the like flare is cast inside the lens, which is quite appealing. It has a sort of, well, and obviously has a retro vintage look to it. This little adapter will allow you to do that. But let's just talk a bit more about practicalities. First of all, let's just talk about size. Now, the M, this is an M9, which is slightly bigger than the M10. And this is the SL. And I think you'll notice that they're not that far apart in size. So this is on your left, this is the SL, this is the M9. And if you look closely, you'll find that the SL is a tad taller, but it's about the same width. And in my hand, it feels very similar in weight. I don't know whether, that, obviously the SL2 is slightly heavier and on paper, a few more grams, but it doesn't feel that much different. But of course, as soon as you put a lens on it, it does change the dynamic because your average M lens is gonna be something of that size. This is my one of my favorite all-time lenses. This is the 18mm Super Elmar. That's you know, a typical size for an M lens, 35, 50, something like that. As soon as you look at the SL lenses, it's a different story. Now, this is one of the most unbelievably useful, functional, get it done sort of lenses I've ever used in my life. It's the 24 to 90, fits on the SL2. Um, it's a zoom, it's got autofocus, it's got a stabilizer built in, it's optically awesome. It's a different kettle of fish. You've got basically six lenses in one here, so it's going to be bigger. And you just have to accept that. So the function of it is so good that I accept that this is a big lens and it's, it's a little bit heavy to use. Good thing about being heavy is that it's stable. So hand holding this lens again with a stabilizer built into the lens and stabilizer in the body makes low shutter speed shooting very, very easy. So they all have their benefits, but if you genuinely want to be traveling light, let me just put that out of the way. If you generally want to be traveling light, then putting M lenses on your SL, SL2, SL2S is a really neat idea. And it, I mean, what can I say? It's just such a sweet little, little device, it really is, and so beautifully made. So let's just talk a bit about how it all works. Um, it's not that hard to explain, really. You simply put the lens on the adapter, click it into place, and then put it onto the SL2. And just like any other lens, it just clicks into place. And that's it. Uh, two things that you've got to do though. First of all, you need to make sure that the camera has picked up the fact that it's an 18 mm Super Elmer. Now the lens does have six bit encoding on the back and the adapter will read that, but you need to have the lens profile set uh, to automatic or you can manually choose the lens. So if I just go into the camera settings in the menu, turn the camera on, and you'll see already, it says new lens detected, Super Elmar M 3.8 18mm aspheric. So it works. If you wanted to set it manually, you can go into profiles and you can choose the M lenses from this list of pretty much all the ones that are currently made. Now I know the 18 mil, which I will be talking about a bit more in a bit more detail because I've got a lot of pictures to show you. It's actually been discontinued, unfortunately. But the 21 is almost is almost identical in design and just not quite as wide. We don't have autofocus anymore. 
And you could be forgiven for thinking that this is a problem because you're probably used to autofocus. Now, I was brought up on manual focus. When I studied my career, there was no such thing. Yes, I'm that old. Um, manual focus, in many respects, is more hmm, functional, more useful than autofocus. It can be more useful. But a, lot of the a lot of the time, autofocus is fine. But if you want to be really... Mm, how to put this? There are some things that autofocus doesn't like. For instance, focusing on low contrast uh, subjects like the sky or a, a, a wall or something, it's not very keen on. Also, very, very hard for autofocus systems to distinguish between foreground and, and uh, background images when they're overlapping. Like if somebody had hair hanging over their eyes, it would be very, very difficult for any autofocus system of any design to distinguish between the eye and the hair. If you've ever tried photographing somebody with glasses on, you'll find it's really difficult to get the autofocus to focus on the eyeball and not the glasses. And if you're using a Noctilux or something like that with this much depth of field, you'll find that challenging. With manual focus on this camera, with this viewfinder, it's effortless. The way it works, you simply click the joystick on the back of the camera. And now that would normally trigger autofocus on the SL lenses, but in this case, it triggers a magnification of the view in the viewfinder to 100%. And it is just so obvious what's in focus and what's not. And in fact, with the Noctilux lenses, they've got such minimal depth of field, you don't even have to magnify it. You can see in the viewfinder precisely where your focus point is. You feel really connected to it. And it's something I, I just don't get that feeling with autofocus. Yes, it works fantastically a lot of the time, but there's situations where you really need to go back to manual focus and you'll find that it's, it actually works better. And an M lens in manual focus with that beautiful silky smooth focusing and this viewfinder here is just a joy. It really is. And you can be really slick with it. A little bit of practice, you know, if, you, if you've never used manual focus or you've tried using manual focus on an autofocus lens, which is never quite as easy because it is really not designed for manual focus. It will work, but it's not designed for it. These are designed for it because they are only manual focus. And like I've gone to a lot of trouble to make sure that the focusing mechanism is super smooth. And on this lens, which is one I've used a lot over the years, it really, really is. So I guess I'm enthusing a little bit here because I genuinely love using the M series lenses on the SL2. Um, and I would probably do more of that uh, except work tends to demand that I get a lot of stuff done very quickly and you simply can't beat a zoom lens with autofocus for getting the job done. But for my own personal work and for the sheer enjoyment of the process of photography, I really think that an M lens or a mechanical lens on a camera with a viewfinder as good as the SL2 is just something that you really should consider. It's just, it's, it's really great fun, it really is. That is the SL2 and the adapter. So the thing to do is just to show you some images of the sorts of pictures I've been taking with this and other M lenses. So let's get into that. All right, so I thought I'd start with this particular one because um, this is from a rodeo in Western Australia, because I want to show you, and this is particularly um, effective with a super wide lens. So I'm gonna start with the widest lens and then I'm gonna to go to the more telephoto lenses as, as we go through. So this is on the 18 mil super Elmar. And for 18, you could substitute 21. They're not that far apart in focal length, but I do love the way that a super wide lens gives you a real sense of being inside the photograph, really pulls you in. Um, it's also great for expansive shots where you want to have some big sky. I'll talk a bit more about that in a sec. But I really love the way this lens draws and it also gives you this chance to make the viewer look as though they're included in the scene because you're so close to everybody. It also allows you to do things with diagonals that really pull your eye into the shot. So I've used this lens a lot over the years, as I said, and highly recommend something super, super wide. This is in Cuba and this is a puddleography. This puddle in the front here, which is reflecting this, the bicycle, is only about the size of an A3 sheet of paper. You'd be amazed how small that puddle is in real life. I was just demonstrating how you can get a perfect reflection in a very small puddle to a group that I had on an academy trip. And the cyclist came into view and I took this picture by sheer luck. I have to confess this was not a contrived photograph. The fact that the tower in the distance is exactly the middle of his wheel is just good fortune. 
um, I'll take my good fortune where I find it, but it makes a, an interesting photograph and it also shows off the effects of the 18mm because this sort of photograph with the reflective foreground works far better with a very, very, very wide lens held very, very close to the reflective surface. Iceland, uh, moving clouds, long exposure, uh, red filter, very, very strong contrast. This is again a great way of using a super wide lens because it makes that sky look that much more expansive. This is Ethiopia, again the 18mm lens. So this, these are all 18mm Super Elmar on the Leica SL or SL2. Uh, the later shots are on the SL2, the earlier shots are on the SL itself, but the effect of them is very much the same. This is La Libella in Ethiopia again. It's great for interiors and closed spaces, um, really effective. And it's so easy to focus the lens. Uh, you might think that going back to manual focus will slow you down, but it doesn't take long before you've picked up the skill of doing it. And it really can be just as effective as autofocus. Now, a lot of people would never pick this as an 18 millimeter lens. I was uh, shooting in very close quarters and because he's parallel to the camera, um, I'm not looking up or looking down. There's no distortion of the perspective and it looks like it was taken with maybe a 50 millimeter lens. So the fact that it's super wide is, uh, shouldn't put you off. Uh, used correctly, it can be a very, very effective lens. It's also, of course, really good for big skies and dramatic landscapes. This is the Gold Coast uh, in Queensland um, with a particularly spectacular sky. That, and I had the 18 millimeter on the SL2 because it's such a nice walk around lens. Uh, lugging around the big 90 to 280 or 24 to 90 is you know, something you might choose not to do if you're going for an evening stroll as I was that evening. But I had the little 18 mil on, so it's a lightweight camera. And I think this one worked really well from the point of view of being super wide. Then documentary work, this is the Elvis Festival in Parks in New South Wales. Uh, it's kind of exact, his, his legs really are that long because he's on stilts. So it's kind of a bit of a optical joke here because 18 mils are really notorious for exaggerating perspective. And they certainly can do that when they're used wrongly uh, or when they're used with that effect in mind, should I say. But the idea of this being shot on a super wide just amused me because of the way he's got his legs sticking out like that. This is one of my favorite pictures from the same event. Again, it just shows how inclusive the angle of view is. It makes you feel as though you're stood there looking at what's going on. Um, the 18 mil, again, something I use so many times. Architecture, it's good. You just have to work with the, the perspective that you've got. And don't forget that any diagonals will tend to come in very strongly from the corners. That's what you get with a super wide lens. So 28mm Summicron M, uh, I've used that a bit, not a lot. Um, this is in Cuba. This is a setup picture with a model and I've got a flash, uh, just a pocket flash off to camera right. But the 28mm was just ideal for this. Uh, I found it very effective and very, very easy to focus. Uh, autofocus really can be more trouble than it's worth sometimes because with the manual focus on these M lenses, you can just nail the focus on his eye and then you don't have to worry about it. There's no, there's no chance of the camera refocusing because you just stop focusing at that point when you're happy. It's very, very effective. Uh, it takes a bit of getting used to, but once you've got the hang of it, you just wonder why you've never done it that way before. This is Ethiopia. Um, down in the south, in the, these are the Mercy tribe. Um, this is a sort of classic 28 millimeter lens. This one, when you go in close, not so classy. You wouldn't really pick this as a 28 millimeter lens. It's just because I've got in quite close and there's nothing really to exaggerate the perspective and show the wide angle nature of that lens. This is the, the chieftain of that particular village. Um, 28 is a very nice focal length for reportage work. Uh, it seems very natural somehow to the angle of view of your eye. Um, and it means you don't have to go too far away or too close. It's a nice sort of, um, it's a nice balance. It means you can include the background, but without being you know, too unbalanced. Then of course, using the Noctilux lenses, and I've got both Noctilux lenses um, to demonstrate to you in these pictures. The using the Noctilux on the SL2 and the SL2S with that viewfinder is easier. I'm going to be I'm going to be brutally honest with you. It is much easier to use than on the actual M camera that it's designed to be to, to work with, because it's because of that viewfinder. It's so sharp, so crisp that you can see the focus point in real time moving around. It's it's actually easier to focus a lens with limited depth of field than one with wide depth of field. 
the 18 millimeter is actually harder to focus accurately than the Noctilux because it's harder to judge the point of focus. But with this lens, it's effortless. I mean, this shot is easier to shoot with manual focus than any autofocus lens. The autofocus would struggle to pick out that um, stone or spearhead in this case against the background but with autofocus it's just really obvious in the viewfinder you don't even have to magnify it you can just see it crisp in the viewfinder it's fantastic even interiors like this have a nice fall off effect this is the Noctilux 50 again and then the 75mm Noctilux same thing just a slightly different perspective the uh, gentleman on the right is sharp focus, the horse is out of focus, even though it's a telephoto lens looking straight into the light and it's a beautiful, beautiful lens. And it allows you to pick out figures in a crowd, just one person focused in the whole crowd. Quite astonishing. Great for portraits, really throwing out that background, very compelling. And the other thing, uh, the reason I put this one in is that the guy on the right is moving backwards and forwards as he's arm wrestling and I'm holding the focus on his eye by following the focus as he moves in real time. This is using the Leica SL. This is something that you can do with such a good viewfinder. It'd be very, very hard to do this with an M. Only long, long experience would allow you to follow focus in a situation like this. But I found it really quite surprisingly easy on the SL and the, obviously the SL2 these days. Nice light, nice subject, Noctilux. It's just, uh, it's just such a beautiful lens. This is at um, Uluru in the center of Australia. This is the Field of Light art display. We went there to photograph it one, uh, early one morning and uh, this is one of my guests with an SL2 uh, photographing the, uh, the lights. They're actually LED lights on stalks uh, covering a huge area. It's a beautiful installation. Something else you can do with the M to L adapter and that's you can put R lenses onto the on the R to M adapter and use that on this camera and to end it with two adapters. Now I know there is an R to L adapter that you can get as well, which is great, but if you have uh, both adapters, you can use M lenses and R lenses on the L mount camera. And I've got here, this is one of my favorite lenses, just as an indulgence. This is a 1965 90 mil Elmerit. It's the Mark II version. Uh, and it's the, so Elmer it makes it a 2.8. This is a wonderful portrait lens and also a fantastic video lens because the, me the mechanism, the focusing mechanism in this lens is so perfectly smooth. There is no slack in that whatsoever. So from a video point of view, doing a focus pull is really, really easy. I've also got this lens, which I use a lot. Um, the 90 mil not so much, but this one I do use a lot. I don't have a 90 to 280 um, with me very often because it's a big lens, but sometimes I take this because it's about half the size and it gives me a 180 f 2.8. And that is the M, sorry, the R to, R to M adapter. Sits on the back, simple as anything. And then that clicks onto the M to L adapter on the SL and that, that lens, which I think is a 1985 lens. So what's that, 15, 35, 36 year old lens absolutely up to the standards of the sensor in this camera. That's an amazing piece of engineering. So it's a beautiful bit of kit and you can find these secondhand pretty much all over the world, but you will pay good money for good examples. And some of the more exotic ones like the, the APO version of this, the 180 2.8 APO, really are highly collectible and you will pay a considerable amount for them. This one is the non-APO version, it's quite reasonable and it's still extremely good. So I do recommend that lens. Here's a couple of pictures. This is the 180 millimeter R lens that I showed you and I've found that I've used that lens quite a lot as my sort of go-to telephoto lens because I love the, uh, the perspective and the sharpness is inarguable. It is really quite superb. This is Meteora in Greece, same thing. I love the way that the perspective gets pulled in. So that's uh, the sort of work I've been doing with the M lenses and uh, this, this is my go-to kit really. SL2, 18 millimeter. I don't have many M lenses, um, just the 28. Um, I might get the 90 Summerit, no, the 90 Summicron Apo. That would be a sweet little lens to use. It's only about so big. And um, that gives me a lovely perspective. Then again, the 90 millimeter SL lens is just glorious too. It's twice the size, but it's beautiful. There's so many choices, it's amazing. But yeah, if you've got M lenses already, 
seriously consider getting the M to L adapter. And if you don't have M lenses already, seriously consider getting some and putting them on your SL2 or your SL2S. You won't regret it. It's a really good step forward. And if you like vintage stuff and you like that look of the older lenses with the different coatings, um, there's so much that you can find out there in the world of um, secondhand and vintage and, and even antique lenses. Fit them onto an SL2 or an SL2S and you will not look back.